Subheading, please, is costs. And what you need to understand is that there are two types of costs. The first cost is known as a fixed cost. So what's a fixed cost? A fixed cost is one that does not vary with output. So that's the formal definition. A fixed cost is one that does not vary with output. But by giving an example, it will make it make more sense. The example they always give in the exam is rent. And what I'd like you to remember is this. Imagine that you and I own a chocolate factory, so living a great life. Imagine that the chocolate factory is producing nothing. So imagine we're producing no output whatsoever. Would we still pay rent? Yeah. If that chocolate factory now goes and produces the maximum number of chocolates that it can produce, does the amount of rent that we pay vary? Does it change? No, it stays exactly as it is. That is therefore an example of a fixed cost. Because irrespective of the amount of output I produced, I pay the same cost each time. So that's your first cost, fixed cost. The second type of cost is known as a variable cost. And a variable cost is where the costs vary with output, from the name. So in the context of my chocolate factory though, what would be an example of a variable cost? An example of a variable cost would be anything that I need to produce the chocolate with. So for example, cocoa, sugar, milk, the raw materials in essence. And the way to remember in an exam if something is a variable cost is to ask a very simple question. Is to go, do I need more of that thing to produce another unit of output? Well, do I need more cocoa to produce more chocolate? Yeah. Therefore, it is a variable cost. So the two definitions that we need to capture is a fixed cost, which is one that does not vary with output, and a variable cost, which is one that does vary with output. One of the things that you need to understand is the distinction between the short run and the long run. Now the common misconception is that people consider this to be a time frame. That is actually not true, at least not from an economic perspective. The short run is simply where at least one factor of production is fixed. Now, an example of that, again, if we talk about rent, is the idea that it's quite difficult for you to relocate to, let's say, a new factory. It will take a while for you to be able to relocate and find the appropriate factory. Therefore, we would consider you to be in the short run when you're paying your rent. The long run is defined by the fact that all costs become variable. And the idea is simply in terms of what you need to understand is that there's enough time for you to now plan ahead. So in the long run, all factors of production are variable. And it's important to understand, therefore, that if we are operating in the long run, we assume that fixed costs become zero. There are no fixed costs in the long run. So make sure that you have that in your notes. Okay, so now that we've discussed the two types of costs, we need to go through some very basic mathematical formulas. Starting with total cost. So, what would total cost be? Think about what we've just said so far. Total cost is equal to total fixed cost, TFC, plus total variable cost. Simple as that. So if I want to take my total cost, I have to factor in my fixed and my variable costs. Now, a few things that you need to be able to always figure out in an exam are averages. So throw back to, I don't know, like year nine maths. How would I calculate an average generally? So for example, if I want to calculate our average age, what would I do? Well, I would add our ages together to get a total, and I would divide it by the number of people that I'm basically adding up. So in the context of this, if I wanted to calculate average cost, AC, all you do is you take the total of that particular concept and you divide it by quantity. In other words, AC is simply equal to TC, total cost, divided by Q, quantity. The second definition or the second formula is average variable cost. So how would I calculate that? Average variable cost is simply total variable cost divided by, again, output, Q. The final formula, have a go at this one please, is average fixed cost. What do I do in that context? Well, I simply do total fixed cost and I divide it by the quantity. Simple as that. Now, the very first diagram that I'd like you to see is a total cost curve. So you should be able to see the total cost curve now. And it has a couple of numbers. These are made up numbers, just for your reference. The first question I'd like you to answer is as follows. Based exclusively, on the diagram, is it possible or impossible for you to tell me what the fixed cost is? Is it possible for us to say what the fixed cost is? If you think it's possible, I also want you to shout out what number you think it actually is. The correct answer is that it is possible. But let's just go through the logic of why. 
And I'll take you back to the example that we just went through with the chocolate factory. I said to you guys that if we produce nothing in our chocolate factory, do we still pay rent? Yes, we still pay rent. Therefore, do you agree that on the, on the diagram we have, when output is at zero, the fact that the cost at that point is 3,400, what is that? That must be our fixed cost because it's a cost that we're incurring despite the fact that we're not producing any output at all. In other words, in this made up example over here, the fixed cost is 100% 3,400. So now that we've established that the fixed cost is 3,400, what I'd like you to attempt by yourself is the following. At point A on this diagram, I'd like you to tell me what the average cost is, what the average variable cost is, and what the average fixed cost is. It's probably a good idea to pause the video at this stage and attempt these by yourself. Right, assuming that you're back, let's go through them one at a time. And it's a good idea to have the formulas that we've already written out in front of us if we're not certain. So the very first thing I wanted us to calculate was average cost, AC. Well, what is the formula for that? Well, it's total cost divided by output, quantity. Well, what is the total cost at point A? At point A, the total cost is 8,700. Therefore, I'm simply going to do 8,700, the total cost, divided by the output at that level, which is 100. So very basic maths, 8,700 divided by 100 simply gives us 87. That's your first formula. The second thing that we need to calculate, I'd argue, is the hardest of the three questions that I asked you. Average variable cost. What is your average variable cost? Well, think about it. If I know that my total cost at point A is 8,700, and if I know that my fixed cost is 3,400, my variable cost is therefore the difference between those two, because I know that my 3,400, I pay that irrespective of how much output I produce. But I, as a total, have a cost of 8,700. Therefore, my variable cost is simply 8,700 minus 3,400, which gives me 5,300, and I divide that by 100 again to get 53. Nice and easy. The very final thing that we need to do is average fixed cost. Average fixed cost is simply the total fixed cost, it doesn't change, 3,400 divided by the output, which again is 100, which gives us 34. If that wasn't clear, go and do it again, because it's imperative that you can plug these formulas in, in a diagram like this.